Today I'm bringing you the astrophysicist Dr. Jason Lau from the old so famous Answers in Genesis. You see, he does these conferences called The Ultimate Proof of Creation. I watched a video of one of these conferences and uh, I still don't think he reached his great goal. Maybe it's because I'm kind of thick. Mm, could somebody please enlighten me? I just don't get it. I do science basically the same way that my evolutionary colleagues do. I, do, I use physics and chemistry and astronomy and so on, and my secular colleagues do the same. Wow, that's pretty good. We're starting on the right foot. I agree with you. I like to think of the Bible like prescription lenses. Those of you that, that need glasses to see properly, put on those lenses and the world snaps into focus and everything becomes clear. You see the world as it truly is. Of course, since the Bible is true. And I like to think of evolution like red glasses. You put on red glasses and you see red everywhere. Now, it's not that the world is red, but that's what you see. And you're not being dishonest about it. You say, look, the world's red. You're not lying. It's just that, not intentionally, it's just that you're looking at the world through that bias. Them dumb creationists. They're just not wearing the right kind of glasses. The philosophy that we should come to evidence without a philosophy is itself a philosophy. Philosophically speaking. For me, for the creationist, the Bible is the ultimate standard. Now, I'm not saying that all creationists have the Bible as their ultimate standard. I'm just saying they should. Why? Because the Bible is true, of course. Now, I have secondary standards. I believe in the methods of science and so on. But when there's a conflict, you're, you're, the one that you go with is your ultimate standard. And I believe the Bible is the ultimate standard. It's the history book with which I interpret the evidence. It's really logical. If there is a conflict between scientific facts and what the Bible says, you should always go with the Bible. Everybody knows that. Naturalism is the ultimate standard for an evolutionist. The idea that nature is all that there is, or at least methodological naturalism. We should pretend that nature is all that there is when we do science. Well, imagine that. Natural sciences looking for natural causes to natural events. What a waste of time. We need to somehow show that our standard is the correct standard with which to interpret the evidence. Why? Because the Bible is always right, idiot. A lot of times the evolutionists will say, maybe we can meet on neutral ground. Let's meet somewhere in the middle. Maybe there's a few things, a few rules of interpretation we can agree upon, and then we can look at the evidence based on those rules. So you give up some things, I'll give up some things, we'll meet in the middle. <laughs> those stupid evolutionists. <laughs> Problem. Biblically, there is no neutral ground. How did I know this was coming? What does Jesus say? Matthew 12, 30. He who is not with me is against me. He who does not gather with me scatters. When it comes to an ultimate commitment, there's no neutral. See? Jesus said it was impossible, so it is. Or how about this? Because the mindset on the flesh is hostile toward God, for it does not subject itself to the law of God, is not even able to do so. How about that? Yeah! How about that? The Bible indicates there's no neutral. So follow my logic here. Since the Bible indicates there's no neutral, the claim of neutrality is itself unbiblical. If you say to someone, there's no neutral, got to take a stand, and someone says, oh, yes, there is a neutral, and I'm neutral, that person's just said the Bible's wrong. How dare he? And so if somebody says, yeah, let's meet on neutral ground, I mean, maybe there's some things we can agree upon. I don't agree that the Bible's the word of God, so you got to leave that out of the discussion. If you say, yeah, okay, we can leave the Bible out of the discussion and just talk about certain scientific evidences and so on. We'll meet on neutral ground. Well, neutral ground is a secular concept. The Bible says there is no such thing. And we all know that the Bible is always right. If you agree to that, those terms of the debate, what have you agreed to? You've agreed that the Bible is wrong. Bad Christian. Bad, bad, bad Christian. Oh, but that's circular reasoning. You can't stand on the Bible to defend the Bible. Why do I get the feeling I already know his answer? Sure you can. Yay! 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 I'm so good. I impressed myself. So, how can a debate over worldviews be rationally resolved? Yeah, how can they? And the answer is, biblical presuppositions lead to knowledge. Secular presuppositions do not. Translation? I'll always be right, and you're a dumbass. If you want to have knowledge, it's got to be through God. It's got to be through His presuppositions, biblical presuppositions. Yeah, you can't know anything if you don't go through God. Now, there's an objection to this. Are you sure? Are you really, really sure? 
Because I've just said knowledge is all in God. If you want to have knowledge, it's got to be through God. There's an objection because some people would say, well, wait a minute, Dr. Lyle. Uh, Non-Christians do know some things, right? See, he wasn't really calling us dumb earlier. Yes, but then again, non-Christians do know God. Everyone does, according to Romans 1. God has revealed himself to everyone. Yeah, even the, to the people who don't realize it, everybody around the planet knows about God, so I guess there's no need to go evangelize. So they sometimes get things right, and they do have some knowledge. See, non-Christians sometimes get things right. What a relief. My point is, if the Bible were not true, nobody could know anything. People do know things, therefore the Bible's true, you see. And now, we finally have proof that the Bible is true. People wouldn't be able to learn or figure things on their own if it wasn't true. That's what I call inescapable logic. Only the Bible can make sense of those things that we take for granted, like reliability of your senses. I can see, I can smell, I can feel. That proves nothing is, is possible without God. You see, biblical presuppositions make sense. They're consistent with what we'd expect in order for knowledge to be possible. Putting it another way, if the Bible were not true, you couldn't prove anything. That's why the proof of the Bible. If you if you is that without it, if it were not true, you couldn't prove anything. Why did I not realize that? In order for knowledge to be possible, certain things would have to be true, and those things are only true if the Bible is. Listen carefully, folks. None of these things would be possible if the Bible wasn't true. Such as laws of logic, for example. We all take that for granted, that there are standards of reasoning. Why would there be standards of reasoning in a random chance universe? But it makes sense. I mean, the Christian ha can make sense of laws of logic. We have a standard of reasoning. God and his word, his revealed word, is our standard for thinking. And so we, we would expect there to be universal laws of logic. Laws of logic that work everywhere because God upholds the entire universe. We would expect that there would be absolute morality. Okay, nothing is possible without God. That proves the Bible is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My point is, if your belief system were true, it wouldn't make sense for you to believe in logic. <laughs> now I see the error of my ways. Logic would not be possible if God hadn't created it. This proves everything. Biblical worldview, when we open it up, look beneath the surface, it makes sense. It's consistent, it's rational, it'll lead to knowledge. When we look at the secular worldview and open it up, it can't possibly work. It's not going to lead to knowledge. <laughs> it's not going to be possible. It's not going to rationally work. Isn't it simple? God is the engine. Without God, there's no engine. That's more proof that God exists and the Bible is true. Because I'm interpreting the evidence according to these standards, he's interpreting the evidence according to those standards. But what we've seen is when you do an internal critique, these standards are sinking sand. They will not work. And that's, that's biblical. Jesus talks about that in Matthew 7. It's only if you build his, your house on his word, on his teachings, the word of God, that you can stand up to rational scrutiny. Yep, because Jesus said so. Only Christian presuppositions will support a worldview. It's the only rational possibility. <sighs> yes, Dr. Lyle. How long before we get to your ultimate proof of creation, Dr. Lyle? See, there's this objection that there's no, there's no common ground between the believer and the unbeliever. There's no neutral ground, but there is common ground. God's ground. Everybody stands on God's ground. And you see, that's basically my argument, is that the Christian worldview alone provides the rational ground on which everyone must stand. That's what it comes down to. Dr. Lyle claims it's God's creation, therefore it is. In his presentation, he goes on to claim that uniformity of nature and absolute morality are impossible without God. Blah, 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 blah. Now again, the Christian stands on those, and it makes sense, because those things are, are contingent upon the biblical God as revealed in the scriptures. And by the way, it has to be the biblical God. We'll see that throughout this uh, presentation, and, and if, uh, even if I don't show it explicitly, you can ask afterwards. It can't just be any old God. It has to be the God of the Bible. No, he doesn't unless you consider that he has given us ultimate proof of creation so far. Uh, but the evolutionist also stands on those principles. He says, well, I don't believe, in, at least in Genesis, I don't believe that. But you know what? What? He has to rely on God's principles in order to make sense of anything. And so the fact that he's able to make his case, you see, proves that he's wrong. Because in order for him to argue, he's got to use laws of logic. In order for him to do science, he's got to use uniformity of nature. In order for him to, to understand ethics, he has to believe in absolute morality. And those things only make sense in a Christian worldview. Why? 
guess what? He doesn't explain. Apart from the biblical God, morality can only be relative, and yet everybody knows it's not the case. That's right, Dr. Lyle. People can't tell right from wrong without the Bible. That's why all non-Christian societies are so lawless and immoral. Buddhists, Hindus, and Shintoists don't know that lying and killing are wrong. Consider an evolutionist who's outraged at seeing a violent murder on television. He's just upset. How can that man kill that little girl? That's terrible. Why should he be angry? He's an evolutionist. Because he's human, maybe? Just maybe? Because he knows in his heart of hearts the biblical God. Everybody does. We suppress that truth and unrighteousness according to scriptures. That's what we as human beings do. That's right. That's because he knows the biblical God, just like the billions of others who don't. But do? By the way, again, it's got to be the Christian God. Can't be the God of Islam, for example, because Allah does contradict himself. And the Bible doesn't, right? Of course not. It's the word of God. Naturalism, the belief that nature is all that there is, and the naturalist attempts to use logic and reason to support his position, but there's a problem. Why? <laughs> because Dr. Lyle said logic and reason are impossible without God. Who am I to disagree? How do we use these concepts in witnessing to people and debating with people? There's a powerful way to do this. It's called, I call it the don't answer, answer strategy. And it's a biblical strategy, which is why it's so good. God knew how to do these things, and he told us how to do them. Don't answer the questions you are asked. That makes sense. Jesus used to do it. Well, that settles it then. Somebody says, I believe in naturalism. Show me logically how the earth could be 6,000 years old. Don't, don't, please don't. You're going to zoom in on two words, naturalism and logic. Those two things do not go well together. They do not comport, right? If naturalism were true, you couldn't prove anything because you wouldn't have logic. There's no basis for logic in a naturalistic worldview. So the fact that you're able to make an argument at all shows that your worldview is wrong. Now, that's what I call not answering a question. In any case, any attempt to refute Christianity would only make sense if Christianity is true. And so any critic of creation must use creation in order to argue against creation. And that's, that's universally true. I think of... Um, So it turns out the ultimate proof of creation is that it's in the Bible, and the Bible must be true because nothing else is rationally possible. Any alternative cannot account for the things that are necessary for knowledge, for science, for morality. <gasps> That's it? That's your ultimate proof? Because it's in the Bible, and the Bible must be true because you claim science and logic would not be possible without God. And creationists complain that we don't take them seriously. Well, folks, what we have here is not a philosopher, but a sophist. It comes from the Greek sophistes. They were people who made a lucrative business out of teaching the tools of philosophy and rhetoric to the Athenians who were famous for suing the pants off one another. A lot of their followers attacked Socrates constantly, which royally pissed off Plato. This attitude toward the sophists eventually became very common, and today we've got sophists too. The snake oil salesmen of philosophy, you know, they are people who use specious arguments to deceive others. And true to his Greek roots, Dr. Lyle goes around doing conferences for a fee, obviously, where he teaches people the ultimate proof of creation and how not to answer the questions of evolutionists in order to win debates against them. Come on, Dr. Lyle. It's one hell of a step down going from astrophysicists to sophists. You don't need a PhD to do that. This has been an obnoxious cat production. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching this video. I would ask you to take a second to rate and add your comments. If you haven't subscribed yet, I invite you to do so. There will be plenty of both interesting and funny stuff ahead.